to today's live chat, which is coming to you from Wrocław, Poland, and uh, from Camp For You, where I am currently resident. And uh, right, so uh, as always, it's a live chat, so uh, please keep the language uh, in the comments uh, appropriate. And if you can't hear me, then do say so, because I mean, I can't tell if the wind is too strong or not. But at the moment, the wind appears to be quite, uh, well, not too bad anyway. They, spoke too soon uh, right so anyway so I'm uh, I've been here now for a month just about and uh, the weather as you can tell is isn't too bad I'm wearing a t-shirt but I've got a uh, one of these things over the top so I mean for the middle of October that isn't too bad at all tomorrow got 22 degrees forecast and uh, that suits me down to the ground the point of this a little chat is that I wanted to talk about an extra guest that got itself into my vehicle. In fact, it's now happened twice. Uh, last year, about this time last year, um, I was in Germany. Indeed, there though it was much colder. I then, hello, hello, uh, Dean. <laughs> um, I, I then went. Um, to Abenteuer Nalra, you know, the off-road trade fair, which uh, was being held in October because COVID meant that it couldn't be held in June. And it was freezing. And after that, I came to Poland and my van more or less went into storage, uh, so to speak. It was stuck in the garden. Um, I went off uh, doing other things. Um, uh, I was in Ukraine, for example, but there I went by train um, and all almost all travel I did. I did actually use it once in March, but effectively from October until the beginning of June, the van was stuck in the garden. In the meantime, however, I'd be going in and out of the van doing things from time to time, but I brought just about everything that was inside the van indoors, including the mattress, for example, didn't want that getting uh, damp. Uh, but something stayed in the van. In the meantime, one day I went in and I noticed that some, a plastic bag had been shredded and there was damage. I didn't immediately recognize the signs of the mouse being in there until I found the damage on the plastic bag. Now, I, in my ignorance of these matters, assumed that maybe if I drove the thing off or was living inside, then the mouse would uh, depart. The problem was that isn't what happened. I heard the mouse several times, never could find it. And uh, the, the final straw came when I left one of these sort of protein bars that I'd been given uh, in a drawer, I heard this chomping, came to it, and there was the protein bar with bits by, bitten out of it. What was I to do? So I looked at the, uh, what can you do when the, uh, you've got a mouse in your van? Well, clearly frightening it didn't work. I, st I tried banging on the places I thought it was in and I actually banged on the, the radiator grill so much that it came off. Uh, that's it within the, uh, sorry, the, uh, the, the grill for the um, refrigerator, sorry, not the, uh, not, not the, not the motor. Uh, there are three types of animals which get into vehicles a lot, at least here in Europe. The number one is the mouse, the second one's the, the rat, and the third one, and this may come to a surprise to people in the United Kingdom, where it's quite rare, is the pine martin, which isn't rare, uh, for example, in mainland uh, Europe. And now, the first thing you can do, you can get these sort of electrical things that emit some kind of a high-pitched squeal that we can't hear. But uh, I tried doing that, and the result was that... Uh, um, sorry, I didn't try doing it. I tried looking into that, but the result was that despite the cost, you're looking at around 50 euros to get one that would actually frighten off up to up to Martins. Uh, but it uh, it just 
I saw no evidence that they actually worked. Um, that left me two uh, lethal methods of getting rid of it. Uh, one of which was uh, poison and the second one was a trap. So poison I absolutely dismiss because if the, the mouse uh, eats poison and the body's going to be left in the, the van somewhere it's going to rot inside the, the vehicle. So the third thing was a trap. Um, I went and bought a trap and I put some peanut butter on it because that's the sort of thing apparently that they really go for. Something which is fatty and it's got a distinct smell and went to bed. Ten minutes later I heard the, the trap operate and that was, that was the end of the mouse. So I got, I got rid of the mouse using a trap. Uh, didn't want to do it that way but there was no other choice. Now I remember uh, mice can have in anywhere. I mean, I remember when I was a child, was a father caught one in the house. It wasn't a mouse; it was a shrew. Uh, though he didn't know what the shrew looked like, and I did. Uh, I remember we had a friend in center of center of Paris, and she lived on I think it was the fourth floor, if memory serves me correctly. And she had mice in her house. So I mean, this can happen to anyone. Obviously, you want to get rid of the mice because of the risks that they uh, can cause. Uh, with diseases and the likes, so it's not it's not a good idea. As far as vehicles are concerned, you've got an extra problem. They can bite cables and things like that. And if they bite into a cable, it could there's the risk of potentially causing a fire. So you've got to get rid of the things. Anyway, I um, last week I was sitting in my van doing something with the computer, and I hear some rustling. And I initially think, aha, it's some birds on the roof or something like that, as you and heard it the second day and the third day I decided to investigate and I saw the mouse. Um, didn't act quick enough, I suppose I could have grabbed it, but it was just the, it was the shock of uh, not, not, the thing is mice don't have a collarbone. And this means to say that mice can get down really tiny holes. And uh, so it's, it seems totally illogical because of, because of uh, the, the, and it got between like a the skirting board, uh, it got under the skirting board. I have no idea how I managed to do it. I I had pet mice as a child, and they got out of the cage, and the cage the the the, the bars were about what five six millimeters apart, something like that. I, could, I couldn't understand it at the time. They can get into really tiny areas. Anyway, a um, couple of days running, I thought uh, I'd got rid of the mouse. Uh, I opened one of the drawers there, was I heard a movement up. So back with the uh, trap and the peanut butter and I got rid of the mouse. Now, uh, here it's not so much of a problem, but there are some places where you certainly don't want to have any rodents anywhere near your home. If you, lived in the, if you live in the United States, for example, and um, the southern parts of particularly, if you have rodents, that might attract snakes. Now, rattlesnakes, of course, a rattlesnake can kill, but it's very rare that it actually happens. On the other hand, if you're somewhere in the Middle East or Africa, and you get something like a, a, a sore-scaled viper, then uh, that's much more dangerous. So you certainly don't want to have mice, uh, anything which could be snake food anywhere near your home. Now they, they say you've got to keep it super clean and not leave any bits of food lying around. And if there's any bits of food in my van which is lying around, the first, the first vermin that's likely to get it is me. Then um, I, I think that in these circumstances, the, uh, the, 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 the thing to do is to obviously try and keep things super clean, but it's not, I don't say that actually, you know, there's, there's a limit to how it, it may be super clean, but the, the mouse is possibly going to come anyway. Another thing you, apparently you can try are scents. Now, uh, one scent that I've tried, I use for mosquitoes, which I've talked about in the past, is um, 
lavender <laughs> forgot the word uh, use lavender or citronella and you can uh, put that into the burners with tea uh, you put a candle under it and you put some water above it and and, uh, and it gives off this I think rather nice scent and it, you can also use other things like air freshener things as well with lavender or citronella and they don't like that uh, apparently mice don't like um, lavender but uh, it didn't work in my case maybe that it just wasn't strong enough the uh, scent to keep it out anyway so that is my experience of uh, van life sharing it with unwelcome guests note when the dog was around uh, nothing like this actually ever happened I had I had insects in a few times that uh, you park on a um, anthill or something or where the ants live and you don't notice that then within uh, I don't know a day or so you got a, a stream of ants in your van that that uh, that I've had on a couple of occasions but um, my snow so when the dog was there there was definitely uh i don't know if there's more insects got in or not but, <laughs> but uh, uh anyway good so anyway if anybody's got any ideas on this mice in uh, motorhomes and uh, things of this nature do write them down and write your opinions down as well because uh, it is always useful there may be a better way of actually getting rid of the things which i don't know about and would like to anyway so all the best from me in Wrocław, Poland. Hey, I'll just show you where I am. I'll just turn this round. There you go. There's the view on this wonderful autumn day. And this is one of the um, dikes I'm standing on now for the uh, for the river. The river orders over there somewhere. Okay then. So thanks for watching. And from me, it's bye for now.